What is going on guys? You are in for a treat today. This is not my typical video. I actually did a collaboration with another YouTuber who is a math professor, Michael Penn. He has a channel, almost 200,000 subscribers where he does all kinds of different math uh, problems. And he actually did this particular one that you can see here counting on a chessboard where he counted the total number of rectangles on a chessboard. So like all the different combinations of squares, he went through how you could solve that. Anyway, I hadn't actually seen that video, but one of his subscribers saw that video. And then uh, in that video, he actually reached out and asked if there were any chess YouTubers who were, wanted to like give him a, a lesson and do a collaboration and learn some math tricks. And so anyway, one of his viewers who was also a subscriber to me, let me know. And that's how I kind of got in touch. So thank you, Suli, for sending me that message and letting me know. Anyway, we did the collaboration just earlier tonight. Um, I gave him a basic chess lesson and then he taught me a little math trick to, to figure out something cool about numbers. Uh, what you're going to see in the rest of this video is the math part of that uh, collab. So when he was teaching me the lesson, uh, hopefully I don't make too much of a fool of myself. Um, and if you want to see the chess lesson where I give him the basic chess lesson, that's over on his channel. You can go over there. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, so check that out if you're interested. I think you're going to enjoy this. I will say it's been a long time since I've done some of the things that we were looking at. And so, yeah, uh, anyway, it's easier for me to play chess than solve math problems. That's what I learned. But yeah, I hope you uh, enjoy. So I think I think these number puzzles are really cool in that they're pretty easy to do. Much easier than playing chess. <laughs> <laughs> but they seem absolutely crazy right like it seems like uh impossible to just figure out in your head what the last digit of 433 to the 1297 is is that correct that it seems crazy or am i just so jaded uh does it sound crazy yes it sounds it sounds okay great. cool that's the right answer <laughs> um but by the end of this, you'll be able to do it very, very quickly. I think if you plug this into a computer, it would be too big for the computer to calculate. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and if it's not too big for the computer to calculate, like the number, uh -huh. uh, you could make one up where it would be too, too hard for the computer to calculate, but you could still find the last digit very, very easily. With this trick. Okay. With this yeah. trick. Gotcha. Okay. But we need some definitions. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is the definition of two numbers being congruent modulo n. So here, let me get a laser pointer. So let's say you've got two, these, this is the symbol for integers. So that just means like positive and negative whole numbers. And then this is a, a positive whole number. So we've got two integers a and b, and we've got a natural number n. Um, and they're congruent mod n. That's what that's the word we use. And this is the symbol, this like a with a triple equal sign b mod n. If when you take their difference that you get a multiple of n. And so like that's equivalent to them having the same remainder when you divide by n. So this idea of the remainder being the same is like super helpful and super important and may be way more helpful than it seems like it should be in that this sort of arithmetic where you forget about everything except for the remainder is like the underpinning of like all of modern cryptography and code breaking and like all of the security on the internet is based around this sort of arithmetic. Okay, so like okay. for some examples, yeah, go. No, Do you no, have a question? I, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Okay. So here's some really basic examples. So 10 is uh, one mod three, because notice if you take 10 minus one, you get nine. Well, let's write that. So because 10 minus one equals nine and nine is a multiple of three, right? Right. Yeah. And, or you can think of it as like, if you do 10 divided by three, you get a quotient of three with a remainder of one. And so this like remainder of one is the important part. And that's why, that's why you would say that these are congruent mod three. 
because they have the same remainder. And then 24 is four mod five. So you can change this thing that you're working with, like, uh, you know, depending on the example. So here we were working mod three and here we're working mod five. And so 24 is four mod five. That's because if you do 24 minus four, you get 20, but that's a multiple of five, right? It's five times four. Okay. So that's why like you would say 24 is congruent to four mod five. And then finally, 138 is uh, eight mod 10, right? Because this one is even easier because you only look at the last digit, right? That's because if you do 138 minus eight, you get 130. But since that ends in a zero, it's clearly a multiple of 10. Okay. Um, and then you could do more complicated ones. Like I made some exercises for you, for example. Okay. <laughs> so what would you say 15 is mod four? I guess three. Because Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So 15. Yeah. Minus. Okay. Right. So that, that's a good way to think about it. The closest multiple of four would be 12. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, yeah. So here you've got 15 minus three is 12. Yeah, okay. and then 29. 29, so we would go, let's see, 24, so five. Yeah, exactly, five. Okay. And then 13, 26, 40, what is that? 52 so seven i think uh yeah yeah exactly yeah i tell okay. my students like they're all afraid of like multiplying 13s but right the deck a deck of cards there's only 13 cards in each suit so it should be oh, right, easy right. to multiply up to four <laughs> that's a good uh good point yeah. <laughs> and, and then so this last one it's the easiest one nine yeah nine okay cool so as you, as you can see, like what we've seen, maybe we'll, we'll say observation, is that um, finding uh, the last digit of a number, maybe we'll call it N, right? And that number could be crazy. You know, let's say maybe it's a crazy number. Um, that's equal to, uh, and this is like the, more technical way of writing this down. So reducing it modulo 10, right? So up here, let's see if I can, up here, it's easy, right? You, we see the number 1,279. It's easy to look at that and say, oh, I know the last digit's nine, right? Because I see all of the digits. Sure, sure. And so like asking what the last digit of 1,279 is, is a totally boring question because you can see the last digit. And so to answer that question, you don't have to reduce it mod nine, but if you, sorry, mod 10, but if you go over here to our big goal, I don't, I can't see all the digits of this, right? Right. I mean, this is like 533 to the power of 1,000. 297 that's a that's enormous right it's probably got like uh four thousand digits or something so it's probably got like four thousand digits i can't see all the digits um but i can find the last one if i have a trick of reducing it mod 10 without calculating the digits and it okay. turns out there's a way to do that and so a priori, it's not clear that there's a way to reduce it mod 10 without finding all the digits, but there is a way. And it involves this thing called Euler's theorem. So Euler is this like mathematician in the 1700s who like made up all of this number theory, made up all of this number theory, discovered a lot of this number theory back then. And it's actually one of the biggest cases for pure math being important because the number theory had like no applications until the 1970s. So it took like 300 years before any of this had any applications. Okay. But th the application makes the internet possible. Okay. So it's pretty important, right? 
Yes. And so like whenever anyone's like, ah, pure math, you know, there's no point. Well, there was no point in number theory for 300 years, but now it's like one of the most important things out there. Gotcha. Okay. So in order to understand Euler's theorem, we need this thing called the Euler totient function, which is this, this fancy phi right here. So we read that as phi of N, like the Greek letter. And what it does is it counts up all of the numbers between one and N that are, we say, relatively prime to N. That means that they just don't share any divisors. And so there's like a fancy way of calculating this phi of n, but we don't need that for our examples. Um, and so let's look at these examples. So phi of six, well, let's just list all the numbers between one and six. So I think we probably know all those. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we want to throw away all of the ones that have common factors with six. So six clearly has a common factor with itself, right? Mm -hmm. uh, two. That's a factor of six, right? Mm -hmm. Three is a factor of six. And then four is not a factor of six, but it shares one, two, right? So four is even and six is even. So they share two as a factor. So we have to throw that away. And so if we were to count up all of the numbers that are relatively prime to six between one and six, we would get just two. So this phi of six is two. And now if we were to do the same thing for 12. Well, you know, let's list all these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then just go, we'll go through and X those out too, right? So we can't keep two, we can't keep three or four, but five is cool, right? Uh-huh. Because it's, not a factor of 12, or does it share any factors of 12? Five's prime, so we know five's gonna be cool regardless. We've got to throw six away. We can keep seven. Uh, we have to throw eight away. We have to throw nine away. Eight has a factor of two. 12 also has a factor of two. Nine has a factor of three. 12 also has a factor of three. We got to throw 10 away. Got to throw 12 away, but we can keep 11. So notice we've got four in total. So that means that phi of 12 is four. Hmm. And now we can do the same thing with 10. So let's do 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So what, what number would be phi of 10? So we would throw out two. Yeah. Uh, we would throw out five. You and missed one. We, we would throw out four because we have two and we throw yep. out six and eight, I guess, by the same reasoning. Uh, that's right. I think we would keep those. So we had one, two, three, four, so five, is that right? No, we have to throw out 10 also. Oh, right, right, right. So yeah, we yeah. Have And actually like, that's four. super lame. This is, this is the general way that you write down this uh, Euler totient function with this like less than or equal to here. And uh -huh. so we include the last number, but the fact is, is you never like use this last number. So you might as well like just make it a strict inequality to never have the last number on there. But sure, I don't know, sure. just if you were to read it in a textbook, it always has this. Okay. For some, so for some reason. On this one yeah. As well. So we would okay. get four. And then here's one more. So if P is a prime, then the answer is always P minus one because every number one, two, three, four, up to P minus one, they're all relatively prime to P because, because of the definition of a prime, it only factors into one in itself. Interesting. And so yeah, so that's just, that's just kind of, a, oh, exactly. Okay. The only one you throw out is itself. Okay. Oh. Um, and I mean, this like Euler's theorem is a, is a general case of this thing called Fermat's little theorem, Fermat's little theorem, which has to do with the primes for what it's worth. Okay, so now that we understand this function, uh, the Euler's theorem says this. It says that if you've got something that is relatively prime to N, then 
if you raise it to the phi of n power, you always get one mod n. Not one just in the world, but one mod n. So let's see, for example, this seven to the six is equal to one mod nine. And that's because phi of, phi of nine is equal to six. We didn't count up nine, but we could, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we would throw away like six and three and one, two, three, four, five, six numbers are left, right? Uh, yes. And so, so we've got seven to the six has got to be one mod nine by this theorem. This theorem has a fairly easy proof, but you know, it takes like 20 minutes to set it up and it's not super interesting if you're not into that kind of stuff. Right. And we could, we could check this if we wanted to, because seven is fairly small. Um, and we would do it just by calculating seven to the six, which seems like totally daunting. But since we're working mod nine, we can reduce it at every step. So we can pair the sevens like this. Then we know like seven times seven is 49. So really we've got three copies of 49. But then since we're working mod nine, we can reduce 49 mod nine. So what's 49 mod nine? Pop quiz. <laughs> um. So sorry, I was thinking about something else. So 49 mod nine, um, it's gonna be zero? No, 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 no. Sorry, um, wait, 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 um, let me think. 49 mod nine. Uh, four. Four, yep. Sorry, I was... Uh... <laughs> because it's... Uh... Four 45, more than 45. 45 right? Yeah. So now we've got four times four times four. But then if you multiply four times four times four, you get 64. But 64 is one mod nine because it's one more than 63. Right. So okay, 64. I was, I was following you right until uh, we got to the example seven to the six, one mod nine. That's, that's when everything kind of fell apart, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just an application of this big result. Okay. So th this big result says that if you raise a number right here uh -huh. to the power of this phi of n, you always get one. Okay. You have to get one. So for example, like, let's do a simpler one maybe. So let's do like this. So let's use one of these over here. So let's take like seven. So if we take seven, no, we already used seven, that's boring. So let's say we take five. So if we take five to the four power, we'll get one mod 12. And so you might say, well, why is that? How do we know that? That's not how you spell why. There are so many things wrong with that. Okay, so how do we know that's true? Okay, so first of all, five and 12 don't share factors. We can agree with that, right? Yes. Yes, and that, that's good because that means we satisfy this hypothesis right here. So see this hypothesis that says the GCD has to be one. That just means that A and N don't share factors. Okay. Yeah, okay, so they don't share factors. So that's the first setup. And then, so we'll say that's, that's number one of Y. Maybe that should be a different color, right? And then number two of Y, is phi of 12 is equal to four because we counted it up over here, right? We, okay. like count, we counted it up over here. And so Euler's theorem, so we'll just say Euler, he says that because one and two are true, then 
five to the four has to be one mod 12. So like a theorem says that if your hypotheses are true, so in this case, these are the two hypotheses, right? This, uh, let's see if we can do. So this, this hypothesis that I just highlighted there and in this hypothesis that I have here. So these are both true, then that means the outcome has to be true. And the outcome in this case is that if you raise this number to this other number, you always get one. Okay, uh, one question. So the, the mod 12, was 12, yeah. was 12 just an arbitrary number that you picked or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, no, we picked 12 uh, just because it was like kind of in line with uh, our example that we did right here. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Yeah, so this, this N right here can be anything. Okay. Yeah, it just has to match this number. Okay. Yeah. So we could do another one. Like, check it out. Um, let's use let's use one of our ones. Like, uh, let's maybe do eight. So let's so let's say we work mod eight. So that means we need to count up first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got to kill the even numbers because those share factors with eight, but we can keep all the odd numbers. Those are cool, right? Yes. Because they don't share factors with eight. So that's, this tells us that phi of eight equals four. So you might say, Michael, it seems like a lot of numbers are, have a phi value of four. Like we've got 12, 10 and eight. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just because we're only looking at small numbers. Okay. So that does get bigger as you go. Yeah. Higher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, it's unbounded. It can go as big as you want. Um, yeah. That's just because it's like kind of a pain to look at larger numbers and you don't, you don't win anything for looking at bigger numbers. Okay. Okay. So now if we took like uh, 17, so 17 doesn't share any factors with eight, right? Correct. Because it's odd. Right. And then we raise that to the fourth power. So Euler's theorem says that has to be one mod eight. Okay. Now we could check that if we wanted to, but we don't have to because there's a proof of this theorem. And I mean, that's one of the great things with math is that it's true, right? There's like, no question of it being true or false it's like there's a question of is it useful or not but it's true so like this was proven and it was proven once for everything and it wasn't like data was collected and it's like something that seems like it's true no it was it was proven from logical first principles that this is always true so okay. that means that that we know that any example that we come up with is, is going to be true. So here we know that 17 to the four is one mod eight or like 23 or maybe 21 to the four is also one mod eight. Okay. I think I'm on board with you there now. Okay, cool. So let's, but what was happening with that 13 to 20 to the 24th? Yeah, let's do that one. So this seems this 13 to the 24 seems a little bit trickier, but let's notice this. 24 is equal to six times four. You would agree to that, right? Uh-huh. Um, and you might say, well, why did we factor it as six times four? Well, it was important to factor it as four because four is equal to phi of 10. And you might say, well, why are we saying that we're interested in phi of 10? Well, that's because we're working mod 10 over here. 
so if what you're reducing mod, so like here we're reducing mod 10, so it's going to be helpful to express things in terms of phi of 10, which happens to be four. Okay, so what, what's, does that equal one there also? Yeah, so this is going to equal one, exactly. Even though and you multiplied that four by six, it doesn't change anything. Exactly. That's because if you remember from some time in your past. So here's okay. one thing that you can do. I probably is that don't. you can notice that this uh, can be reduced mod 10 before it even gets started. So that's the same thing as three to the 24. So you're allowed to do that. So 13 is bigger than 10. So we can make it less than 10 by reducing it mod 10 before we even get started. See what I did there? Uh-huh. Yeah. And then you can do this next thing, well, look at this, which is like write this as three to the four and then to the sixth power mod 10. Because if you remember, like, I don't know, I'm like so jaded that I don't know when people like learn these kind of things, but somewhere in your past, you learned that there was this exponent rule that says when you raise an exponent to an exponent, you multiply the exponents. Right. Yeah. I promised that sometime that was thrust upon you. Yeah. I'm sure it was. I'm sure yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's cool because this phi of 10 uh, is four. So that means that this three to the four is really one. So that's one to the six, but one to the six is just one. Hmm. Okay. So, well, what did we just do? We just saw that the last digit of this 13 to the 24 is just equal to one. And we didn't have to calculate it at all, right? Right. <laughs> I don't know any other digits of 13 to the 24. I only know right. the last one. And I know that it's one. But that's like exactly our big goal, right? Right. Okay. But before we go back to our big goal, Let's do a bigger example. And let's do this mod 10 instead of, no. Let's change it a little bit. Let's do it. Let's make that into a one. And let's do this mod 10 instead of mod 15, just because I don't think it adds anything to do it the other way. So uh, in other words, let's maybe put in here that IE, um, one of my students once like told me the difference between IE and EG. I didn't know there was a difference and I okay. don't remember what, what it was. What is the difference? I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. She was like more trained in that kind of stuff than I was. Okay. okay. So, so in other words, we're going to find the last digit of 37 to the 1,231, right? So that's what this is doing. Right. Okay. So here's what we can do. So we want to do a, a little bit of a setup first. And the setup is based around the fact that we used on the last board uh, that phi of 10 is equal to four. So that means that four is like really the most important exponent um, for this game that we're playing, right? Correct. Because of, because of what Euler told us. Sure. Okay. Sure. So now we look up here and we say, okay, well, this number is like pretty gnarly, but maybe we could like extract as many fours out of it as we can. And how do you do that? Well, you do it with fifth grade arithmetic. And I'm really just going to do long division right here. 
So you would say, oh, okay, well, four goes into 12 three times. Get a remainder of zero. I bring the three down. Uh, four doesn't go into three. I bring the one down. Four goes into 31 seven times, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, and that's 28. And then I got a remainder of three. So here's a remainder of three. Okay. And now I'm going to like do something that is hardly ever done in fifth grade arithmetic, but it's exactly the same thing. And I'm going to write this 1231 as four times 307 plus three. Okay. So that's the same, right? Yes. Um, now, now we can get to work. So we can take this 37. So let's see. Okay, so we can take this 37 to the one, two, three, one. And we can start by saying, okay, we're reducing it mod 10. So that means I don't care about the 30 part of the 37. I just care about the seven part. Right? Uh-huh. Then next, I can look at this and see, oh, actually, I don't care about any of these fours because I know all of these fours will just give me a one, right? Mm -hmm. Because of Euler. So that means none of these fours matter. And all that matters is this remainder right here. The three, yeah. The three. So now I've reduced my problem to instead of calculating 37 to the power of 1,231, all I have to do is calculate the number three to the seven. And now you could like rip that out pretty easily, but there's that actually an even quicker way of doing it. And that would be to write it as seven squared times seven, then use the fact that seven squared is 49, right? Okay. And then 49 mod 10 is well known, right? You can reduce that to nine times seven, but what's nine times seven? Uh, 63, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 63. I remember, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> but now 63 is just three. Huh. Right. So like, look, we could have, I, you know, I don't, I think I'm not really good at my cubes or whatever, but I think seven to the three is 243. Um, but if we were to multiply that out, you know, it would take a long time. But if we just do simple multiplications along the way, like we did, right. Mm -hmm. So we just did this like splitting and then one simple multiplication at a time and then reduction every time it gets too big it's a lot easier right right so and that's what we did everywhere right we said oh 37 that's too big i don't want to work with that let's work with seven instead this like 1231 that's too big i can just work with three instead because of euler huh right and so like anytime things start getting too big you can just reduce it Interesting. Okay. So now, since you can't interact with my uh, iPad or whatever, you, you can just tell me what to do. <laughs> so what do I do? Uh, so we need to, let's see, first take away as much as we can from the 433. Yeah. So I guess using 10 we can turn that into three is that right yeah yeah exactly so yeah the 433 we don't care about the 43 or the 430 part because right. we're reducing mod 10 and we're reducing mod 10 because this last digit game right and so now we've reduced our problem to this which is st still looks pretty gnar, 
because we've got that huge number of the exponent, but at least we've like reduced it a little bit. So what would you do next? Right. Um, so we have to reduce the exponents using the uh, Euler's part. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so I'm trying to remember exactly how you did that. Uh, so because it's mod 10, we know that that's four, right? Right. So we have to basically divide 1297 by four? Right. Okay. And then we'll, we'll get some remainder. Which... Yeah. So what remainder will we get? Um, yeah, good question. <clears throat> <clears throat> three again <laughs> wait is that right yeah four times 24 yeah we get a remainder of three okay okay so given that we have a remainder of three what do we do now so you can rewrite that 1297 to be uh four times 326 plus three exactly okay so we have three to the four twenty times three twenty six uh, plus three. Yeah. So three to the four times three two six plus three. I think that's what you said. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to remember what was the next step. Um, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna we sort of skipped a step over here. I was like sort of showing you a trick to skip a step. So notice we just skipped from here to here. Uh, wait, let me get my laser pointer. We skipped from here just to the remainder in the exponent, which is like, oh, right. Uh, I don't know that it's, I wouldn't say that it's cheating, but it's definitely like, a second time through a problem like this, you would want to do something like that, not a first time. So here, I'll do another step in the middle right here. So this is maybe the step that I would do in the middle. This is three to the four, all to the 326 times three to the three. So that's using these like exponent rules where right. if you have certain uh operations in the exponents they trickle down to other operations in the base okay so this is maybe a more proper way than our example over here but you're saying we could have just went straight to three to the three power yeah yeah but maybe talk through or sure. okay why why we could just go straight three to the three like what happens to this first chunk right like what happens to this first chunk um so let's see so the question is why don't we care about it um yeah so remember what euler says euler says that if you raise a number to phi of n you always get one So it doesn't matter how many uh, copies of that we have. We, it's, it's still going to just. Exactly. So I think, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but I think you're saying that this is just one. Right. And then if you have one to the 326, you don't care. Right. Exactly. Because it's just one. Exactly. Yes. I think that's what I was saying. I believe. <laughs> I believe that's what I was saying. Okay. So we. So we ended with three to the three. So I think we're at the stage where you can just say the answer. So what's the last digit of three to the three? Um, so that's 27. So seven. Yeah. So that's it. Wow. So let's see what we did. What we did in fancy math terms is we just Let's see if I can find the color I want. <laughs> Is we just took this number and show that this number was congruent to seven mod 10. But in terms that you can like stop someone on the street and talk about, 
we just showed that the last digit of this very, very large number, 433 to the 1297 was seven. And we did it in one, two, three, four, five lines, right? Yeah. One line was a little bit extra. And the hardest thing that we did was fourth grade long division. Right. <laughs> pretty sweet, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool. That was pretty neat. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if nothing else, it reminded me of how rusty I am when it comes to some of the math stuff that I've learned in the past. It's crazy how when you don't use something, you kind of forget a lot of it. Um, but anyway, I hope that was enjoyable. Don't forget, check out his channel. You can see the chess lesson over there. The link is in the description below. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, stay smart, take care.